Lions TV back for the summer by Vanarama, driving fan TV all the way to the World Cup, including me. The man sitting next to me needs no introduction, but he's going to get one anyway. 300 appearances at the club, 15 years, a true mill legend, Paul Robinson. All right, Daniel, right, mate? Top man, thanks for joining us. A one man, he feels like you're a one man club, you're not, I know that. Yeah. But that's how it felt yeah, coming here today to me. Yeah, it felt that way, to, it kind of feels that way in a, in a certain way. Like I say, 16 years of your life at, at one club, uh, yeah. just everything about the club I loved. I love representing it, love being captain there. And, yeah, let's, look back and just yeah, just got a real strong feeling for it. Well, let's do exactly that. Let's look back. Let's go back to the very beginning. So, signed as a schoolboy. How did that come about? Signed as a schoolboy. Yeah, weirdly enough, um, I was at Watford as a youngster from like ten to fifteen. Ironically, uh, at the time, uh, Kenny Jackett was the youth team manager oh, at Watford. Right, yeah, yeah. And uh, I left Watford at fifteen. I'd had a few injuries, this, that, and the other as standard. And uh, six, and then just went to my local. Uh, Barnet Youth, who were my local Sunday team, and oh. Bobby Bowery was coaching them, really. Fucking enough. Bobby Bowery, yeah, yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ. So he, I was could, he could point like no other midfielder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he had to point and look at the bench, didn't he? That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what I was thinking. Um, and then, yeah, I, uh, so I spent about six to nine months with him there, and then uh, he took me down to Mill for, for a trial with, uh, with Mick Flanagan as a. Because he's only an agent now, Bobby. He's, yeah, he is. He he's, is my, yeah, he's still my agent. Oh, so he's he? looked after me from, from oh, that yeah. all the way Sorry, through. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> All the way through, from 15 all the way through. So, uh, yeah, and then Mick Flanagan was a youth team coach, so he's proper old school, wasn't he? he was, uh, yeah. That was a bit of a rude awakening as a youngster. But um, went in for a couple of trials, done all right, and then, you know, was, was there until obviously 32. You couldn't get rid of you in the end. But yeah, I know. Yeah. What, <laughs> <laughs> what other players were in that youth team that we would know? Anyone that Yeah, came Dunny from? was in my youth team. Dunny, Dunny was on it, playing right back alongside me, and then I had Mark Phillips the other side of me. So yeah. he was in it. Braniff, obviously. Um, Mark Hicks for a while, but he obviously, yeah, yeah, he struggled a bit with injury. Um, and Stuart Nelson, who obviously had a decent career, but obviously moved on from Mill. From Mill Wall, yeah. So yes, yeah, it's, it's a strong side. Byron to be fair. Bubb as well. You forget oh, about. God, yeah. what? Yeah, I yeah, do remember. Yeah, yeah. What a name, Byron Bubb. What a talent he was as well. Yeah, yeah. And he had like obviously Bully, Lake Hay, a dentist who's age group above me as well. Ronnie so. Ball. Yeah, Ronnie Ball, yeah. yeah we spoke to him a few times, he's fucking, he's still, he's still not right, even, <laughs> yeah, he, even these days. <laughs> <laughs> so you eventually, you, you got your debut, do you remember it? Do you know, do you remember the result? Yeah, we beat Preston 2-1. You Come got on it. Come sub, yeah. Four. Uh, I came with an, I the Peckham Beckham. Yeah, I did. Darren Ward. Warder, yeah, played alongside Nevers. Um, I remember the, like, but it just went so quick, if you know what I mean. It was, yeah, yeah. It was unbelievable. Um, and McGee just grabbed me on the side and like, listen, whatever your first instinct is, to head it, to kick it, do whatever, just just follow that first instinct. So for that first like first 45 minutes that flew by, that's that's all I did. It's good moving on to McGee. Obviously he gave you your debut. What was he like as a manager? I liked him. Yeah, no. I liked him as a manager. He was a, he was a player's manager. Do you know what I mean? He was a good man manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, got the lads on side. Built the team spirit and then had good coaches like Ray Harford and Steve Grit alongside him. Yeah. To, to a, lot, a lot of people I speak to say Ray Harford, great coach. Oh, great coach. You can see why he, he coached Blackburn to win the Premier League. He, yeah. was a, he was a great, just a great coach, but a great bloke as well, you know. So you made your debut. Yeah. But then you, you shot off for a bit, went out on loan to Torquay for, was it 12, 15 games? Yeah, I sort of played. I, did that give you, did that, I know it went a long time span, did that give you a little. Yeah, I, play, I obviously made my debut and then I got in the team just after Christmas, didn't I? Played in the cup and played against Southampton in the cup, and that was all under McGee. And then I think about well, six, seven games before the end of the season, I got injured against Sheffield Wednesday, and then I never. And then obviously whatever happens, and then I got back in the team under Wisey when he he was caretaker manager. And we played yeah. like three or four games, and then I done my cruise shit up at Norwich. Yeah. And then I spent the whole of that season out, which was a, of all the seasons to miss. It was, Cup yeah, final yeah, season, wasn't it? Well, well, I was going to ask you what that must have been like being in and around the club. It must have been exciting, but at the same time, probably frustrating for you personally. Yeah, obviously, it was amazing for the whole club, you know, yeah, a club yeah. like ours to, to to go to the cup final and everything. So, yeah. to be in all around it as a young, I mean, as a youngster, obviously, I was in and out of the team, hadn't play, had played a few games. So it wasn't like I was an established player who thought, oh, I'm going to be missing out. Yeah, on that. I see yeah. what you're saying. Like, like Denzel done his knee, obviously, yeah, he, he, was fu- he was fuming, but exactly. like, like you say, you, you, you was. You but we did have a good weekend, Denzel, me, Muzzy, Dick, Deech, a few of the, a few of the lads. Yeah, it was a bit Go on, a, I've, heard, I've heard a little yeah, bit about this. I think they took us down there on the Thursday. And I think we had, we, had like, we had a few good nights out anyway in, in Cardiff, yeah, even though... <laughs> oh, because it's though, Cardiff then, wasn't it? Yeah. No, no Wembley. Yeah, so, uh, you know, that was decent. And like, I think, like Tone says, I think he, uh, he was half cut leading the team out. <laughs> on the oh, you've seen it, you've seen <laughs> it. Yeah, he's... Uh, I mean, the change room... We won't go into the team now, but the change room now seems buzzy. The ch- and... and it seems sort of since then it's not been. You can reflect to that that time while you was in that dressing room. And yeah. The characters around that was it good to be a yeah unbelievable be a part set of characters, it? wasn't it? Proper. What was proper, Muscat like? 
Muzzy right on the pitch was <laughs> an absolute animal, isn't he? If you try, he, if you Google Kevin Muzzy at football, there's not a normal picture of him. He's like snarling in someone's face, but like tackling tackle. someone waist up. It's not like a, just a photo of him in his kit. Like. And they got ta- that tackle. They say it's the worst ever tackle. The football oh. pitch is him folding the kids, isn't it? But <laughs> Muzzy, but like, on the pitch, he was an animal competitor. So I wanted to win that Aussie mentality. Like you'd love him. Um, yeah. And even and in the dressing room before a match, you know, he, he was a yeah took a lot from Muzzy. But then like in a setting like this or around the lads around the dressing room or like that, he'd make everyone feel involved make you feel part of it do you know what I mean yeah, socially yeah. great and make you know if you were a bit on the outskirts of it I felt like he'd get you involved and he was brilliant like that brought everyone together and That's like boring. I say it was almost like a contrast really like just, you, you hear yeah. that a lot of people yeah. just they get and they just lose their head yeah, they exactly. just lose their head the other side yeah, of the line red mist <laughs> and obviously still had still the best headbutt I've ever seen on uh, Paddy Kenny in the, in the tunnel as well that he did. yeah, yeah that was, when he plant him yeah, cause yeah. I, was that the one where Walnock was going you deserved that and all that yeah. Yeah. It's on that documentary, isn't it? Yeah. With Jodie Morris going, you deserve that yeah. from, from <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do what happened? Can you tell us? Uh, well, you just did. Yeah, I, suppose <laughs> you, I suppose you can now, really. Can't I? I think they were having a, a bit of to and a throw in. And I think they were arguing on the pitch. Something had happened on the pitch. They were arguing, arguing. And then obviously got in the tunnel at half time. And then it's all kicked off. But everyone kind of got held back. And I think where Muzzy was being held back, and so was Kenny, like... They sort of stood no, faced yeah, up to each other. No so arms. All he had left was they've been flinging head butt in, so he stuck one on him here. But he go down. No, nah, I don't think he did. To be fair, he took it. He well, took he's, it a right. be, he's a beast, yeah, isn't he? Got a, yeah. a big, massive boulder head. So yeah, it was. Uh, it was interesting. I know that. I think when Ice went up to Chef U, obviously after leaving Mill, even the Chef U lads would talk about that for. Oh, really? For a long time after, yeah, oh, like that, that little brawl in the tunnel here. Yeah. That's decent. That is so good. I, I think Deech had a power rate bottle that he. He didn't have anything. He was the same. He didn't Dan. have anything else. He was trying to whack people with a power rate. Big Danny Deach. Yeah, Big What Deech. was he like? I like Deach, yeah. He good was a character. Good, he was yeah. a great, we could, like, a player we could do with him now. He's good in the air, wasn't he? Yeah, He's strong in the air. He's got yeah. some good headers. Just good goals, didn't he? Like the one against, yeah. I think, Burnley in the cup run, didn't yeah, he? That yeah, that was it, yeah. Yeah, that was a good goal. And that was a good goal. No, he was, good, no, he was, he was a good character, Deach. He was. So eventually, you broke into the team and you saw it just well, come, took over. Captain, Captain under Kenny Jacket? Under Kenny, I think Nigel Spackman was the one that maybe sort of captain properly for the first time. I know his spell weren't kind of yeah, great, I was, but he yeah. watched the race in my memory until you brought it back up. It was up. a whirlwind, wasn't it? <laughs> 12 games had gone, like, amazing how it happens. But um, yeah, and then, like I say, I think when obviously Theo left and what it meant for the club, a lot of players left, didn't we? We, we lost sort of. Yeah, see, I liked him as well, Theo. He, he got a bit of grief, but I, he was decent. I think. I think Mill did well for Theo and Theo did well for Mill. I think it was a really good, good relationship fit, yeah, for both, good both sides. You know, it allowed him to obviously step on with what he's done. Um, <laughs> but then he obviously was. He had perhaps the finances to back the club in the short term and then well, take the money the thing, back like, out in the long term. A lot know, of people yeah. say, like, you know, they, don't, they didn't like Dennis Wise. I like Dennis Wise. And, and when you hear stories like, like Denzel will tell you, Wise said to him, you know, stay, we're going to go for it. We're going to. I don't know, but there's some people, some reasons, don't like him. But yeah. was he a good manager, Wise? He? Wise, he was a good good manager. Like, yeah, he I was think. so experienced. He, when he played, and you can see in the games where he like just waste time, he'd step across the ball and let the geezer take him. Yeah, he's, he was so experienced by that point. In like, the dark arts and that, really. Yeah. Even when he come like passing and that, when it was, it was under McGee, and he's passing his range of passing, he'd see passes that no one else would yeah, see, yeah. and you think you could tell. Obviously, he was coming towards the end of your career, and he gets harder to get around the pitch, but he's still <laughs> you got to use your more, use brain more. Yeah, but then he'd say that he was still the fittest. You do pre season, and I was. Why just only six eight, exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He'd still tear around at the front.